There are more alarming discoveries about the terrorists. CNN is learning that Omar Mateen had shown violent tendencies dating back years, long before the deadliest mass shooting in modern American history. Former classmates say the mass murderer had threatened to shoot up his school, kill his classmates, this when he was just a child. Let's go now to CNN correspondent Brian Todd. He is in Fort Pierce, St. Lucie, Florida. Brian, I know you've spoken to a number of people who, who knew him growing up, and they describe him all along as, a, as an angry person. Absolutely, they do, Jim. Angry, sometimes violent, and certainly threatening at every stage of the way. We have just gotten new information in this afternoon, as you outlined, with just details dating back to his childhood uh, of disturbing, threatening behavior back to his days here at Mariposa Elementary School in St. Lucie. A former classmate of his here at Mariposa says that in fourth or fifth grade, one day, Omar Mateen threatened to bring a gun to school and kill everyone. Now, this classmate does not remember exactly what kind of discipline he received at the time, but remembers that it was, quote, a very big deal at the time. Again, this was in fourth or fifth grade. He would have been maybe nine or ten years old at the time. We have just obtained documents from the St. Lucie County School System indicating that Omar Mateen, Jim, was disciplined 31 times between 1992, when he would have been about six years old, and 1999, when he would have been about 13 years old. A long history of discipline here, and that's just in St. Lucie County. He also attended Martin County High School, uh, and three former classmates have told us that around the time of September 11th, he was acting very strangely, acting out, essentially. He was imitating planes, hitting buildings. He claimed that Osama bin Laden was his uncle. He got into confrontations. That was at the high school level. That information coming to us from three former classmates then. We have outlined his disciplinary problems while he was a security guard. And then, of course, the warning signs leading up to the attack. So, Jim, this new information to us, uh, just with discipline and behavioral problems, dating back to when at least fifth grade and possibly longer, to his days here at Mariposa Elementary School in St. Lucie. It's so often in the profile of attackers like these, they had a long history of mental problems, issues like this. I understand you spoke as well to a personal trainer who worked out at Gold's Gym when he was, when Mateen was an employee there? That's right, Jim. Uh, this gentleman's name is Stefan Convalius. He was a personal trainer. He held sessions there at Gold's Gym. And this is while uh, Omar Mateen was a teenaged employee at Gold's Gym. And Convalius told us that he, Mateen was constantly angry, constantly uh, confrontational with the patrons of Gold's Gym. He relayed one very disturbing incident where uh, he was uh, holding a session, a workout session for a, a female client, uh, Convalius was, and Mateen made a very crude comment about the woman's anatomy. He was very close to her at the time physically and wanted her to hear it. And the woman just kind of glared at him and said, really? And he just didn't end his stare. He was that intimidating to people, Jim. Uh, Gold's Gym said they don't really have any recollection of any of that. So many warning signs. Brian Todd, Fort Pierce, Florida, thanks very much. The ranking Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff, ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, Congressman Schiff, thanks so much for joining us today. You heard thanks, Jim. Senator McCain's initial statement uh, blaming the president, in effect, and you've, you've since heard something of a qualification from him, clarification. Let me ask you directly, what's your response? Well, I was very disappointed to hear the statement. I have a lot of respect for John McCain. He's an American war hero. Uh, but frankly, that statement sounded a lot more like Donald Trump than John McCain. Uh, and I wish he would just retract it uh, in its entirety. Uh, I don't think it adds anything to the national debate. Uh, and, uh, and, and I think it was a grievous mistake. I have to ask you, Congressman Schiff, because that initial statement, as you saw, I mean, it sparked an immediate storm. I saw it exploding on Twitter. Very quickly, he issued this camp clarification, both on Twitter, uh, but also in a more formal statement. It, it seemed that he was attempting to distinguish himself from Donald Trump's position, directly blaming the president. Did, did, did you hear the same thing? Did you interpret the same thing? Well, when I heard the initial statement, it certainly sounded an awful lot like what Donald Trump has been saying. Uh, and it may be an illustration of just how much Donald Trump is coloring the national debate uh, in a very unhealthy and counterproductive way. Uh, and this is part of the danger of Donald Trump, that it lowers the bar in the country. It lowers the level of civil discourse and, in fact, espouses a lot of views uh, that are antithetical to our national security interests. Uh, so I, I do think it's part of the Trump effect uh, in kind of uh, 
uh, ju just making this a much more coarse and vicious political debate, uh, and it really has to stop. Let me ask you this, though, Congressman Schiff. Let's separate uh, direct responsibility, as he initially claimed, for the Orlando shooting. There, there is a more substantive criticism here from Senator McCain. You've heard it from others that, that the Obama administration allowed an opening for the Islamic State by pulling those troops out of Iraq, by not securing a deal with the Iraqi government to keep at least some troops, which some on both sides of the aisle, frankly, have said contributed to ISIS's ability to take over large parts of Iraq. Is there not a substantive criticism there that the administration at least shares responsibility for allowing that opening to ISIS in Iraq? Well, you can certainly make the argument that the administration didn't succeed in negotiating a status of forces agreement. But the fact is the Iraqis didn't want us there, uh, and President Bush had similar trouble in reaching out and reaching any agreement with the Iraqis. Uh, but to somehow then say that the president is personally responsible, uh, and right in the wake of a national tragedy like this, uh, I, I just don't think there's a, a link to be made. Uh, and I think it really is uh, a, really a gross disservice to the president uh, and to the cause of what do we need to do to prevent gun tragedies like this from happening and terrorist attacks like this from happening in the United States. Let's talk about the effort. You saw your colleague, uh, Senator Murphy, on the Senate side giving this, uh, uh, this filibuster to try to at least get a vote on some measures uh, to respond to this attack, uh, some gun control measures. Do you believe, do you see a change uh, in the political environment on the Hill today following this attack? Because we've seen this many times before, horrific attack, talk of some measures to respond a week or two or days later, that feeling disappears. Is there something different about this one that will drive actual action on the Hill? Uh, Jim, you're absolutely right. If you were a betting man, you'd always bet, a bet, uh, bet against Congress and particularly when it comes to the gun issue. Uh, but it does feel like something has changed now. Uh, maybe this is the tipping point. Uh, I would have thought that the country needed nothing more, the Congress needed nothing more than that Sandy Hook tragedy. Uh, but even that did not result in any action that was really part of the powerful motivation for Chris Murphy to take to the Senate floor in that filibuster. But this really does feel like something has changed. Uh, that something here in the Congress, something in the national consciousness has just snapped with this latest tragedy. People are demanding a response, and I think Congress members need to be aware if they stand in the way of common sense gun reform uh, that we may be entering a new chapter.